In computer systems a loader is the part of an operating system that is responsible for loading programs and libraries. It is one of the essential stages in the process of starting a program, as it places programs into memory and prepares them for execution. Loading a program involves reading the contents of the executable file containing the program instructions into memory, and then carrying out other required preparatory tasks to prepare the executable for running. Once loading is complete, the operating system starts the program by passing control to the loaded program code. All operating systems that support program loading have loaders, apart from highly specialized computer systems that only have a fixed set of specialized programs. Embedded systems typically do not have loaders, and instead the code executes directly from ROM. In order to load the operating system itself, as part of booting, a specialized boot loader is used. In many operating systems the loader is permanently resident in memory, although some operating systems that support virtual memory may allow the loader to be located in a region of memory that is pageable. In the case of operating systems that support virtual memory, the loader may not actually copy the contents of executable files into memory, but rather may simply declare to the virtual memory subsystem that there is a mapping between a region of memory allocated to contain the running program's code and the contents of the associated executable file. See memory mapped file. The virtual memory subsystem is then made aware that pages with that region of memory need to be filled on demand if and and when program execution actually hits those areas of unfilled memory. This may mean parts of a program's code are not actually copied into memory until they are actually used, and unused code may never be loaded into memory at all. Responsibilities <laughs> 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 In Unix, the loader is the handler for the system call executive. The Unix loader's tasks include Validation, permissions, memory requirements etc. Copying the program image from the disk into main memory Copying the command line arguments on the stack Initializing registers e.g., the stack pointer Jumping to the program entry point underscore start in Microsoft Windows 7 and above, the loader is the eldrinitializethunk function contained in ntdll.dll, that does the following Initialization of structures in the DLL itself i.e. critical sections, module lists Validation of executable to load Creation of a heap via the function rtl create heap Allocation of environment variable block and path block Addition of executable and ntdll to the module list a doubly linked list Loading of kernel32, dll to obtain several important functions, for instance basithredinithunk Loading of executables imports i.e. dynamic link libraries recursively check the imports imports, their imports and so on in debug mode, raising of system breakpoint Initialization of DLLs Garbage collection Calling nt continue on the context parameter given to the loader function i.e. jumping to rt thread start, that will start the executable. <laughs> Relocating loaders Some operating systems need relocating loaders, which adjust addresses pointers in the executable to compensate for variations in the address at which loading starts. The operating systems that need relocating loaders are those in which a program is not always loaded into the same location in the address space and in which pointers are absolute addresses rather than offsets from the program's base address. Some well-known examples are IBM's OS, 360 for their system, 360 mainframes, and its descendants, including Z.O.S. for the Z. architecture mainframes. 
Topic OS 360 and derivatives in OS 360 and descendant systems. The privileged operating system facility is called IEWFETCH and is an internal component of the OS supervisor, whereas the non-privileged loader application can perform many of the same functions, plus those of the linkage editor, and is entirely external to the OS supervisor, although it certainly uses many supervisor services. IEWFETCH utilizes highly specialized channel programs, and it is theoretically possible to load and to relocate an entire executable within one revolution of the DASD media about 16.6 milliseconds maximum, 8.3 milliseconds average, on legacy 3,600 revolutions per minute drives. For load modules which exceed a track in size, it is also possible to load and to relocate the entire module without losing a revolution of the media. IEWFETCH also incorporates facilities for so-called overlay structures, and which facilitates running potentially very large executables in a minimum memory model as small as 44 kilobytes on some versions of the OS, but 88 kilobytes and 128 kilobytes are more common. The OS's nucleus, the always resident portion of the supervisor itself, is formatted in a way that is compatible with a stripped-down version of IEWFETCH. Unlike normal executables, the OS's nucleus is scatter-loaded. Parts of the nucleus are loaded into different portions of memory. In particular, certain system tables are required to reside below the initial 64 kilobytes, while other tables and code may reside elsewhere. The system's linkage editor application is named IEWL. IEWL's main function is to associate load modules executable programs and object modules the output from, say, assemblers and compilers, including automatic calls to libraries high-level language built-in functions, into a format which may be most efficiently loaded by IEWFETCH. There are a large number of editing options, but for a conventional application only a few of these are commonly employed. The load module format includes an initial text record, followed immediately by the relocation and or control record, for that text record, followed by more instances of text record and relocation and or control record pairs, until the end of the module. The text records are usually very large, the relocation and or control records are small as IEWFETCH's three relocation and or control record buffers are fixed at 260 bytes smaller relocation and or control records are certainly possible, but 260 bytes is the maximum possible, and IEWL ensures that this limitation is complied with, by inserting additional relocation records, as required, before for the next text record, if necessary, in this special case, the sequence of records may be, text record, relocation record, control record, text record. A special byte within the relocation and or control record buffer is used as a disabled bit spin communication area, and is initialized to a unique value. The read CCW for that relocation and or control record has the program controlled interrupt bit set. The processor is thereby notified when that CCW has been accessed by the channel via a special iOS exit. At this point the processor enters the disabled bit spin loop sometimes called the shortest loop in the world. Once that byte changes from its initialized value, the CPU exits the bit spin, and relocation occurs, during the gap within the media between the relocation and or control record and the next text record. If relocation is finished before the next record, the NOP CCW following the read will be changed to a tick, and loading and relocating will proceed using the next buffer, if not, then the channel will stop at the NOP CCW, until it is restarted by IEWFETCH via another special iOS exit. The three buffers are in a continuous circular queue, each pointing to its next, and the last pointing to the first, and three buffers are constantly reused as loading and relocating proceeds. 
i.e. WFETCH can, thereby, load and relocate a load module of any practical size, and in the minimum possible time. <laughs> Dynamic linkers Dynamic linking loaders are another type of loader that load and link shared libraries like, so files or .dll files to already loaded running programs. See also <laughs>